All right. Uh, thank you everyone again for joining us. My name is Emily Vale. I'm the executive director of the Hudson River Watershed Alliance. And this is our annual watershed conference, Aligning Actions for Clean Water. Uh, again, we have this meeting set up as a meeting. You are all automatically muted. Um, feel free to turn on your camera or have it turned off if you'd prefer during the presentations. And please go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat with your name, affiliation, and where you're Zooming in from. So I'd like to first hand it over to Ryan Palmer, who is the president of the board of directors for the Hudson River Watershed Alliance. Thank you, Emily, and hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I just want to give a, a brief uh, welcome on behalf of the board of directors. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us and supporting the Alliance. A uh, huge thank you to all of our sponsors uh, and a special thanks to the Hudson River Estuary Program, uh, Fran, Scott, and the whole team for being a primary sponsor of the conference for many, many years now. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge all the thoughtfulness and hard work that went into the planning and execution of this conference, starting, of course, with Emily Vale, uh, but also acknowledging our board conference working group, which is this year was Mike Finewood, Nicole Leibel, and Kate Meyer Dirks. So, speaking of the board, it actually just dawned on me this morning, believe it or not, that this is actually going to be the last time I'll be addressing a crowd as president of the board. Um, so, I am stepping down at the end of the year, and this was all part of deliberate succession planning, right, to get some fresh leadership in the Alliance and doing it at a time where I'll still be on the board, stepping down, but I'll still be a board member. Um, so all part of deliberate succession planning. Um, and then at the end of next year as well, myself and a few other longtime board members are gonna reach our term limits um, after nine years of service. And again, that term limit is part of our overall succession plan um, to periodically get some fresh faces on the board. Um, and I mentioned this because um, we could use some fresh faces. We have some openings right now and come next year we'll have even more. And if you missed it last year, we developed a new uh, method for soliciting nominations. So we're doing kind of an open call method, right? This means anybody at any time of year uh, can throw their hat in for consideration. And then periodically our nominations committee uh, about quarterly or so will look at that pool and make recommendations to the board after a lengthy and thoughtful selection process. So um, currently our goal is to around the new year, sometime in January uh, to look at that pool um, start deliberating and hopefully add some board members by the April meeting. Um, so if you're interested, I'd really encourage you to, um, you know, put your head in, consider it. You could even just give me a call to start if you'd like. Um, I think Emily's in the chat will put the, there you go, the link to get more information. Um, and yeah, and also if you're maybe not interested yourself, but you know somebody who might be a good fit, please do forward that on. Um, and this is not the last time you will hear about it. We'll be sending out lots of reminders uh, towards the end of the year. And just finally, I'd like to know as well, we're on this topic, if your organization is working on things like this, succession planning, other aspects of organizational resiliency, or probably more importantly, if you're not, definitely check out the last session of this conference. It's Thursday at 2.30 with Karen Strong. It's called Building a Resilient Organization That Lasts. And it's gonna go into detail about all these topics. So highly uh, suggest that session, as well as all of our sessions including this first one today, which is uh, going to be by our very own Emily Bale. Um, so with that, thanks again, and um, I'll kick it back to you, Emily. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan. So welcome, everyone. Uh, as I mentioned, Emily Vale, Executive Director of the Hudson River Watershed Alliance. You are here at our annual Watershed Conference, Aligning Actions for Clean Water. I want to give a quick welcome before I jump into some introduction to watershed planning, which is our focus of our conference this year. First, I wanted to start with saying that the Hudson River watershed is 13,400 square miles. It stretches from the Adirondacks all the way down to New York City. And the Hudson River Watershed Alliance acknowledges that we are on the land of indigenous people, including the Muncie Lenape, Wappinger, Mohican, Abenaki, Haudenosaunee, and the Mohawk and Oneida nations. These people have stewarded this land throughout the generations, including today. The Hudson River Watershed Alliance is working to build relationships and engage indigenous people and communities in our programs. The Hudson River Watershed Alliance unites and empowers communities to protect their local water resources. We do this by supporting watershed groups, helping to improve intermunicipal coordination and communicating as a collective voice. 
I wanted to give an update on a few of our recent programs. Um, we've been really working on a watershed group needs assessment over the past several years uh, to better understand the strengths, challenges, needs, and barriers of our local watershed group partners. We conducted 32 interviews of watershed group members and held four focus groups with regional partners. And we're working on analyzing and compiling all of this information into a final report. That report will feed directly into a strategic planning process, uh, which the Hudson River Watershed Alliance and, and our board are actively working on right now. And we're really looking to better understand what we can do to support our local watershed partners um, and how the, the region can work together and coordinate more effectively. I also wanted to give a shout out to Larissa Reed from Common Ground Consulting, who's working on our strategic plan with us. And an early conversation with Larissa helped shape the framework of this, this conference. So thanks, Larissa, for your help. The Hudson River Watershed Alliance also organizes education and capacity building programs like the conference. We hold monthly breakfast lectures, which have been on Zoom as webinars. And I wanted to bring your attention to our last breakfast webinar, which was in October. We had a talk on greening inequitably uh, on green infrastructure planning and equity um, with Dr. Zubin Yu Grabowski. And really, his talk covered issues of equity throughout all kinds of different environmental types of plans. Um, this particular graphic that's shown here indicates that watershed plans are one of the types of plans that are least likely to include equity in them. So um, we see that, we know we can do better, and we want to take some of the strategies that he shared um, and improve our, our processes. On November 18th, our next breakfast lecture will be on the Papskany Island land return with speakers uh, from the Forge Project, Heather Bruegel and Charlie Burgess from Open Space Institute. So today we're at our annual watershed conference and we are here in Watershed Planning Foundations. The conference walks through the planning process. Uh, we started yesterday with a fantastic session on environmental justice. If you weren't able to catch it, highly encourage you to go back and watch the recording. It's posted on the Hudson River Watershed Alliance YouTube channel and available for anyone to view. We heard from youth from throughout the watershed on their visions for the future and how environmental justice should be considered in the watershed planning process. And today we'll be talking about watershed planning foundations. So just to give you a quick overview, um, you're here in our Zoom meeting. I, again, we've got everyone muted. Um, you can turn off your video if you'd like, but we wanted everyone to see who was in the conference session together. Um, you know, we can't be in person right now, but uh, doing our best to promote the kinds of networking that we really value. This link is the only link for today. So even though there are different sessions in the Whova app and on the agenda, um, once you're here, you're here. If you have to leave and come back, it is the same link. Um, so just a, a little bit of Zoom housekeeping. Uh, we'll have a welcome and introduction. That's where we are now, uh, followed by information on the Drinking Water Source Protection Program, or DWSP2, clean water planning, focusing on the Mohawk and Welkill Rivers. We'll hear from Fran Dunwell on the Hudson River Estuary Program's action agenda, followed by tools for goal setting from a scientific diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice lens and more. And finally, development of the Harlem River Watershed Management Plan. I wanna give a huge thank you to our sponsors, the Hudson River Estuary Program and NUIPIC, JSA Sustainable Wealth Management, River Sponsors PVE, and SLR, Creek Sponsors, CDRPC, DNV Engineering and Architects, and Delaware Engineering, Pace University, and Riverkeeper. Our stream sponsors, Barton and LaJudas, Chazen, Gordon and Svensson LLP, Ground Point Engineering, Nelson Pope and Voorhees, and the Rockland County Soil and Water Conservation District. And our Brook sponsors, CEA Engineers, Center for the Urban River at BZAC, Sun Common, the Wallkill River Watershed Alliance, and the Woodstock Land Conservancy. Our annual watershed conference is also a part of Climate Solutions Week Hudson Valley, which is a series of events designed to build momentum for climate solutions across the region. I also wanted to give a huge thank you to the Hudson River Watershed Alliance Board uh, for all of your work and support uh, across the year, but particularly in gearing up for the conference. 